Hi everyone, taking a look today at a vehicle that is at the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum which I filmed during Oz Armour Fest 2024 and this vehicle here is an example of German self-propelled artillery from World War II. This is the Hummel Panzerfeld Halbitzer 18M mounted on the Geschutzwagen 3-4. So a bit of a mouthful but what is this vehicle all about? So as the war in the East progressed after it started with Operation Barbarossa in June 1941, it became clear that the German Army's somewhat ad hoc approach to mounting field guns, howitzers and anti-tank guns onto vehicle chassis required some refinement. In the past they'd simply adapted captured or repurposed armoured vehicle chassis and tried to mate them with a gun that didn't overtax the capabilities of that chassis and that was not a recipe for long-term success. So vehicles like the Vespa mounted a 10.5 centimeter light field howitzer and the Marta, which mounted in some cases a 7.5 centimeter Pac-40 anti-tank gun with stopgap solutions at best and utilized obsolescent chassis such as that of the Panzer Kampfwagen II. Now to handle vehicle mounts for heavy artillery and anti-tank guns, better solutions were required. So for this reason, design and development of a self-propelled artillery carriage was carried out by Elket in the autumn of 1942 to mount initially the same 10.5 centimeter light field howitzer as the Vespa. After building one prototype, the project was actually rescoped to create a dedicated Geschutzwagen or gun vehicle chassis that could mount the much more potent 15 cm heavy field howitzer 18L30, with the resulting vehicle being called the Hummel or Bumblebee. The same chassis was adapted to mount the 8.8 cm Panzer Jäger Kanona 43-1 L71 as a long range tank killer, and this vehicle was termed the Nashorn or Rhino. Now both the Nashorn and the Hummel which is seen here were built from early 1943 and saw wide scale deployment during the Battle of Kursk in July 1943 for the first time. So what we're looking at here in terms of the uh, chassis is the Geschutzwagen 3-4 which was the new dedicated heavy gun vehicle. It used various mechanical parts from both the Panzer III and the Panzer IV. So the engine and the bogey type suspension with leaf springs was taken from the Panzer IV and they were combined with the transmission, the brakes, the steering system and the front drive sprocket from the Panzer III into a new monocoque chassis that was longer than the Panzer IV. Now the engine was placed in the middle of the vehicle and space was allocated further forward for a radio operator whose hatch you can see there and a driver. So you've got at the front of the vehicle the driver and the radio operator space, then you've got the engine and behind you've got space for a large fighting uh, compartment where you can house the gun breech, a crew of four artillery troops to uh, service the gun and stowage for about 18 rounds of 15 centimeter um, ammunition. So here you can see the uh, casemate that was built around. It was relatively lightly armored. And there you can see vents for the, uh, for the air intakes for the, uh, for the engine, because that's where the engine was mounted. Moving further down, you can see the tracks. The tracks in this case are Vinterketten, so wider tracks or tracks with extensions on them provide better flotation in snowy conditions. And there below you can see the, uh, the bogey type suspension that's adapted from the Panzer IV. So you've got four bogies per side, each with two double road wheels mounted on leaf springs to provide the suspension for the vehicle. Now in total about 705 Hummel were built along with 157 ammunition carriers or Munitionsjägers and they could be adapted in the field to carry a howitzer if needed but in general they were just used to provide ammunition to the uh, rest of the battery. Now all Hummels and uh, 494 Nashorn Heavy Panzerjäger were assembled by Deutsche Eisenwerk in uh, Duisburg. So here at the back of the vehicle if we look down and underneath you can look forward and see that uh, the leaf springs on that Panzer IV adapted suspension. And you can see the ground clearance that's, uh, that's there and the, there's a good shot of the, uh, the rear idle wheels as well. Now the gun itself, the 15 centimeter Schwer's Feldhabitzer 18-1 L30, was a heavy indirect fire weapon. Uh, the carriage mounted version of the gun was typically towed by horses or half tracks. And the howitzer was designed by Krupp and manufactured by Krupp and Rheinmetall. Over 5,000 of these guns were produced from 1933 to 1945. Now the high explosive shell that was uh, used by this gun weighed about 43 and a half kilos and it was two piece ammunition. So first the explosive projectile shell was put into the gun breech, which you can see there. And then the separate charge canister was rammed in behind it. Could also fire smoke rounds and AP armor piercing shells, but that was only for, uh, uh, for short range use and was only used for self defense. Now the gunners had the option to use seven different charge canisters depending on the range that the gun needed to uh, fire. So maximum firing range was a little over 13 kilometers and the high explosive shell had a muzzle velocity of 495 uh, meters per second. And a good gun crew could fire about four rounds per minute. So if you look around the sides there, you can see some of the areas for stowing ammunition. And also inside was an MG34, which could be dismounted and used for uh, self-defense of the vehicle. 
Now the engine was a 12 cylinder Maybach HL120 TRM, 12 litre petrol engine, same engine as the uh, Panzer IV. Developed about 220 kilowatts, had a fuel capacity of 600 litres in the vehicle, and top speed on the road was 42 uh, kilometres per hour, with an operational range of a little over 200 kilometres. Now the vehicle started to be deployed in the field from March 1943, with the first batch of eight Hummel SPGs entering service, and another 46 entered the field in April. It first saw wide-scale deployment during the Battle of Kursk in July 1943. They were used by heavy panzer artillery regiments on the Eastern Front until the end of the war. And Hummels were also used in Greece, Italy, uh, Northwest Europe in 1944. And they were typically deployed in uh, heavy self-propelled artillery batteries, each which had um, six Hummels and one ammunition carrier. Um, so you can see at the back of the vehicle here, there's stowage at the rear for spare, um, uh, spare road wheels. Earlier versions had mufflers back there, but the exhaust were cut short to uh, relocate that uh, carrier for the, uh, for the road wheels. Um, coming to the front of the vehicle, you can see here again the, uh, the casemate for the driver, which is here on the uh, left side of the vehicle. It's a narrower casemate in these earlier versions, and, and that casemate was, um, was widened in later versions to, uh, uh, to cover both the radio operator and the driver. So that's all I want to say about the Panzerfeldhebetzer 18M, or Hummel, as it was commonly known. I want to thank you for getting to the end of the video and listening to me bang on about this self-propelled gun. Look forward to talking to you soon about another tank, armoured vehicle, or self-propelled gun. And until then, I hope you stay well, and we'll talk soon. Thank you.